Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about one of the greatest 35mm cameras ever made, not that I have an opinion, the Nikon FM. This um, uh, old beater has been my default go-to camera for uh, over 10 years, um, and I personally think it's, uh, the FM is one of the most well-designed, um, well-built cameras um, uh, ever for 35 millimeter, certainly. So, the FM belongs to essentially two classes of cameras. Uh, one within Nikon, it represents the first in a series of uh, advanced amateur or, or what today we might call prosumer uh, line of cameras, which I'll simply refer to as the FM class since Nikon didn't give it a name. Uh, and those cameras included the original FM, the FE, the FM2, the FE2, the FA, and the FM3A. So, um, this particular camera, the FM, was introduced in 1977, remained in production until 1982 when it was replaced by the FM2. The FM series remained in production until 2006, I believe. Um, that was the year that the FM3 was discontinued. Um, so, um, within, the, within the class of, well, with, within the Nikon family, um, the FM was preceded by the Nichromat line, specifically the FT2 and FT3. Um, I've done a separate video on, uh, well, comparing the FT2 with the, with the Nikon, um, in which I mentioned the FT3 as well. So have a look at that in order for a comparison between the FM and that which preceded it. The main advantage of the FM over the Nichromat series is size and weight. The FM is smaller and lighter. Um, and a superior light meter. The FM has a gallium photocell as opposed to the cadmium sulfide photocell in the Nichromat series. Um, the gallium photocells as well as the silicon photocells which were introduced in the uh, mid-1970s um, are more accurate, they respond quicker to changes in light, and they have held up better over time. The FM uh, is, was followed by the FM2. Um, which can easily be recognized by the fact that the FM2 has its name right here on the front plate, whereas the FM does not. This part is blank, and the, the model designation is only visible on the back of the camera on the FM. So, I've also done a separate video comparing the FM and the FM2. Please go check that out. Um, the, the FM2, for the most part, represented improvements over the FM, with one or two notable exceptions, again, which I talk about in that video. So, um, within the class of built-like-a-tank cameras, what am I talking about? Well, um, Nikon was, was belonged to a, um, a group of cameras uh, that were produced in the 1960s and 1970s, which many collectors, myself included, refer to the built-like-a-tank SLRs. And the built-like-a-tank SLRs, uh, what we're talking about is the... Um, uh, the Canon FT, FTB, F1, the uh, Pentax KM, KX, MX, Spotmatic, uh, Minolta, SRT series, uh, arguably their predecessors, the SR series, uh, what, Olympus OM1, perhaps, and um, what am I forgetting? Well, anyway, other cameras as well, including most of those uh, which were made for the M42 screw mount. Just about everything made for screw mount qualifies as a, as a built like a tank uh, style camera because most of those were made in the 1960s uh, before camera manufacturers started introducing plastic. So, those features of the class of cameras I just mentioned. Speeds of 1 to 1 1,000th one plus bulb, depth of field preview, mirror lockup, self-timer. Um, however, on the FM, the mirror lockup function and the self-timer function are bundled together such that when you uh, set the self-timer, the mirror automatically flips up out of the way, which is adequate for most situations where you would want mirror lockup. In addition, the built-like-a-tank cameras are all mechanical. Uh, the battery only powers the light meter, so if you don't have a battery, you can still use the camera. All shutter speeds will fire. Um, in addition, uh, even if the light meter is broken or non-functional, the camera is still worth owning. Um, because, it, again, it, it will function and fire on all speeds. So, what are the main advantages to the FM over the other premium, the, the other, excuse me, built like a tank uh, cameras? So the FM has a couple of, of advantages. Number one is the 1.5 volt battery. Um, the FM uses a uh, LR44 alkaline or SR76 silver oxide battery, or actually two of them, batteries, 
which are inserted into the camera underneath in a, in a screw out battery compartment which was characteristic of cameras of that era. Most other built like a tank uh, SLRs of that era used a mercury battery um, which produced 1.35 volts. In most cameras built for mercury battery if you put in an alkaline or silver oxide battery which produces 1.5 volts it won't work. Um, the, it will throw off the light meter and you won't get a good light reading and there are solutions to that problem but the best solution to that problem is find a camera that was built for 1.5 volt batteries. Um, uh, the FM, big advantage. The gallium photocell, I just I, I mentioned that earlier, uh, it is superior to the cadmium sulfide photocells used in the 1960s and early 1970s. The viewfinder uses diodes, not a needle. Most of the built like a tank cameras used a needle that moved up and down in relation to either a secondary needle or an index mark and the goal was to match up those two things together in order to get proper exposure. The FM uses diodes, it's three diodes. You, the goal is to get the, um, the middle diode to light up. Uh, there's a di there, there are two other diodes, one with a plus mark indicating overexposure, the other with a negative symbol uh, indicating underexposure. Uh, it's very simple to use, extremely intuitive, um, but then again, so are the needles. It was, it was thought for a long time that the diodes were better because they did not have moving parts and the needles were fragile and would easily break, um, although the needles seem to have held up fairly well over time. I mean, there are plenty of these built like a tank cameras that are, you know, 40, 50 years old with, uh, with perfectly functioning needles. Um, so uh, that may be a, a matter of preference, but it is a difference. A uh, dedicated multiple exposure function on the FM. The FM is capable of multiple exposures um, and it has a dedicated button for that purpose. That's right there. Um, and let's see what else. It accepts a motor drive. The FM accepts the MD12 motor drive right here. I've done a separate video on the MD12. There are reasons you may want a motor drive even if the idea of motorized film advance seems unnecessary. So please check out that video. In addition, the FM, one of, the, one of its main advantages is the compact size and weight. The vast majority of the built like a tank cameras of that era were about the size and weight of a Nicromat or a small brick. Um, and the FM um, is compact, it's light, but it's not insubstantial, it's not flimsy. Um, in my opinion and in the opinion of many others, Nikon really knocked it out of the park when they designed the FM series cameras in terms of the size and weight. It just handles beautifully. Um, and it's light, but not insubstantial. Um, anyway, well, that's a lot of people believe that, myself included. Um, so if I compare the, um, the FM to, its, uh, to the other members of the FM series, I see a couple of advantages. Um, number one is, well, it has to do with the major complaint uh, uh, leveled at the FM series cameras in general. Every single FM series camera except the early production FM has to have the film advanced lever deployed to the standoff position in order to fire the shutter. So I advance the shutter, fire like so, very good. Well, what if I, uh, what if I sight with my left eye or if I like to shoot in portrait orientation, in which case it's rather inconvenient to have the advanced lever deployed when I'm sighting and, and composing. Uh, that can be a major pain in the neck. Well, the FM, the early models of the FM, check it out. Ta-da! Um, you can stow the advanced lever flush against the body and still fire. Not all FMs can do that, only the early production models. Those are indicated by a serial number beginning with the number two. So if you look on the back of your FM, you're going to see the, the serial number preceded by the letters FM. This is the only place on the, uh, on the uh, outside of the camera which indicates the, uh, the model. It says FM and then it's followed by a serial number. On this camera, that serial number begins with the number two, indicating an early production version. Later production versions begin with a serial number three. So if your FM begins with serial number three, it can't do this. Okay, it will it, it, instead, like the FM2, in order to release the shutter, the this lever must be deployed. If it's not, the shutter will not fire. It's stuck, okay, or locked. 
Um, so if that's something that's been keeping you away from the Nikon FM series camera, look for an early production FM, no problem. Uh, the shutter lockout function in the early production FMs um, was uh, by a ring around the, um, uh, or a collar around the release button, the, um, which switched between lock and, and open. The release, here, you see the, uh, the black mark right here indicating uh, unlocked, the red mark indicating locked. Now, on this particular camera, um, it's stuck. Uh, this ring does not rotate. Um, I do not know if that's a common problem, but frankly, I would rather have a non-functioning shutter lockout feature and the ability to do this than a functioning shutter lockout feature on a camera which required that I uh, maintain the advanced lever deployed in order to fire it. Just my personal preference um, and that of some others as well. So if that's an issue, you need to know that. Also the retractable AI tab. That's a big advantage to uh, the FM. This is a feature also shared by the FE. The AI tab right here, um, if, if in this position, if you try to mount a, a unmodified um, pre-AI lens which has a flat bottom, it will interfere with this uh, tab right there and, and potentially crush it and break it off. So on the FM and the FE, you simply push this button here to uh, retract the AI tab out of the way. So again, push that button and the AI tab is now out of the way. See that? Uh, that little, I don't know how well you can see that, a little button right there. Just push it. The AI tab flips out of the way. Now I can mount an unmodified pre-AI lens, uh, which although to meter, I would have to use it in stop down uh, mode because with this retracted, there is no way for the lens and the camera to communicate aperture information. So I have to stop the lens down to working aperture in order to get an accurate lens, uh, in order to get an accurate light reading. Uh, but I can still do it. I mean, I can still mount the lens without breaking the camera. Um, and when I'm done, when I want to um, return it to its, um, uh, the AI function, you just flip that back just like that. It's that easy. Um, so that describes the Nikon FM in a nutshell. Quick and dirty review. Um, I've done a separate video on loading film into an FM, so check that out if, you, if you're new to 35mm uh, and you're still learning how to load film. Um, I've done a video on that. Um, and um, I expect the prices of FMs to be coming down in the very near future. Um, I think that we're in for a, a tough recession ahead. Uh, and um, I expect the, uh, the price of hobby and collectibles to take a big hit. Um, FMs have been a little pricier than most other uh, so-called built-like-a-tank cameras. Uh, they've been going for you know, $150 in really nice condition. Um, good shooting condition, at least 100 bucks, 120, 125, um, but I expect that to go down. Um, I think in the near future you'll see prices of good shooting condition FMs uh, dip significantly below $100. So um, um, anyway, if you haven't looked at an FM before, now might be the time. I'm uh, honestly, I'm not sure if the FM2 is going to dip as much in value. These tend to be very expensive. And it is considered a premium model, and I don't know if the, if the demand is that elastic for the high-end models, which is why I think that you might see more price um, elasticity in the FM as opposed to the FM2. Um, the, again, just speculation on my part, but why uh, you may want to consider an FM if up until this point you've thought that they were a little pricey. Um, okay, highly recommended to have a look at the FM. One of my favorite cameras. I hope you found this informative. If you did please subscribe and check out the links below. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.